welcome to episode number 100 of the Peer Geek Podcast. And as always, it's an absolute pleasure to be here. Now, I am super excited to have reached this milestone episode. And if I was to go back to the very start when we first listed episode one and think that we would be here on episode 100, you know, I probably would have said no, I'm not quite sure whether or not people are going to find this useful or interesting. Um, however you, you have, and I really appreciate that. If you are a listener, thank you for coming back and listening to the occasional episode or all episodes. And if you're new to the show, this show is all about technology and phys ed and how you can use it for different ideas or different ways to make you efficient, have your students be more engaged or just challenge some of the ways in which we've done things in the past and, and look at ways in which that we can do things new, more exciting, more innovatively, and more in line with the way in which that the world is moving. So this particular episode, I've decided to almost do a little bit of a, I would say a bit of a reflection of all of the previous 99 episodes to this point. And the way I thought that I could best do that would be to do 100 ways in which you could use technology in your phys ed practice. And Obviously, throughout the course of the 99 episodes, we've shared lots of different ideas, lots of different tools, lots of different things. And the best way to maybe sort of summarize all episodes would be to do 100 ideas, share them, put them into categories. And uh, as you go through it, they might serve as a bit of a prompt or a lesson spark or something that, you know, piques your curiosity and you go away and explore that and look at how it can be applied in your lessons. Now, the purpose of this episode isn't to say that all you need to do is find one of these ideas that I give you and, and go and instantly use it in your class. You know, that's probably not what you should be doing. But they definitely can pique your interest. They can provide a prompt that maybe you take away with you and you start to explore it and then all of a sudden get familiar with that thing and, and you can then start to see some of the opportunities that might exist for it. The other thing I will mention is that everything I am going to share, I have spoken about before, whether that's on the blog or the podcast episodes or whether that's in our workshops. You know, These are ideas that I've seen people putting into practice in real classrooms. And you know, in some cases, they put them into practice not necessarily for educational reasons, but you know, in a lot of cases, absolutely to meet educational outcomes. But in other other you know situations, it's to increase their effectiveness, make it their job easier. It's to help celebrate what's happening in the classroom. It's to help showcase and capture assessment data that they can then use to effectively grade and assess students. Or it's, you know, to engage students who maybe are not active and can't be active, you know. So there's this whole realm of possibilities that can come from the simple ideas that I'm going to share with you. And um, all I, you know, ask you to do is to pick a couple of things that sound interesting, go and explore them, and uh, see how they might apply to your session. Now, if you would like the full list, you can head along to thepeergeek.com forward slash 100 for episode 100 and download all 100 ideas. The other thing that you can do is you can download the checklist. And the checklist is a little bit of fun. This is literally something I thought, you know, I've, I've made these 100 ideas. I wonder if anyone has actually done all 100 or explored all 100 ideas. So we created a checklist and you can go and find it and download it at thepeergeek.com forward slash 100. And essentially all it is, is a tick box for each idea and you can make your way through it and see how much of a PE geek you are basically. And, you know, it'll give you, you read the idea and you can tick it off if you've maybe played with that or tried it out in your class or thought, knew about it or whatever metric you wanted to use and whatever's left over, maybe there's some things that you can explore. So uh, I hope you enjoy it. I want to say thank you again for listening to all the previous episodes and uh, I cannot wait to produce another 100 episodes of the podcast and uh, bring on as many guests as we can that are doing some incredible stuff in the world of phys ed and technology. So without further ado, strap yourself in. Here is 100 ways you can use technology in phys ed. 
Now, the first category of, of ideas I'm going to share with you comes from a category I'm calling fun and fitness. Now, they, they can just literally be activities that you have students do that they might do in their own time or they might be you know, classroom sort of brain booster style activities, things that don't necessarily tie to a, a lesson objective but are all about getting people moving and having fun. Now, you can definitely tie these some of these activities into your curriculum, but that's not necessarily the purpose of why they're being shared. So first idea is, and I'm just going to go through the idea and then move on to the next number. And um, and like I said, if you've missed any of these, then you can head to the website and download them. But idea number one is to generate a random workout for your students with the Swerk It app. Idea number two is to complete a Pilates lesson with fitnessblender.com. Idea number three is to play fitness bingo using the Classroom Roulette app. Number four, get get your students jumping with the Jump It app. And that is jumping, skipping ropes. Number five, use the Move It Chrome extension to get active during static classroom sessions. And this particular Move It extension has been so well received across the globe you know we build it as a a fun little project and every day a million people a million activities are served up through the move it extension id number six take an active break with the class break app number seven get active with sweat deck it's a virtual deck of cards that gives you different exercises number eight conduct the beep or pacer test with music beep test app Number nine, crank endless workout music with Fit Radio. Number 10, hide exercise monsters in your school and have students hunt them down with Monsuda Fitness. Number 11, use the Fit Break app to play over 45 games and activities designed for fun and fitness MPE. And this app is built by my good friend Dale Sidebottom. I highly recommend checking it out. There's hours of fun and activity in that. Number 12, get your group balancing with the Balance It app. And this is our most downloaded app by far and a bit of a viral hit. Go and check it out. Number 13, introduce yoga to your students with Cosmic Kids Yoga. And number 14, find a PE game to play with with a shake of a device with the app PE Shake. This is great if you're going into a lesson, you're like, what are we going to play today? Or you're a relief teacher shake the device, there it is, the game that you can set up. Now that's the fun and fitness category up to idea 14. Like I said, they're little lesson sparks, little ideas that you can explore. Um, and you know, you get enough context in just that, um, in that short description to decide whether it's something that you might like to go and check out. Now we're moving on to the video category now and video plays a huge role in, I think, capturing what happens in phys ed. You know, we couldn't do it very effectively in the past. Now we can. We can capture video. We can share video. We can slow it down. We can do all sorts of things and we can use it for assessment purposes. And idea number 15 is to slow down a discrete skill with the Slow Pro app. Number 16, compare a beginner to an elite athlete with huddle technique. Number 17, offer a hands-free instant replay with the video delay app for iOS and Android. It's a free app. It's it's incredible. Now, you can do the same thing for ID number 18, which is offer a hands-free instant replay, but this is on your Chromebook with the Replay It Chrome extension that we built. Number 19, create a highlight reel using video tagger. Number 20, turn an elite performer into a looping animated GIF using Loop It. Number 21, create a strobe motion video using Clipstro. Number 22, use Group Clip to record a multi-angle video on a sports game or an activity that your students are doing. This is an incredible way to engage multiple people to have them all film an activity as if it's almost like a, a pro recording. You know, there's the switching camera angles and so on. Number 23, use DMD vClone to create a video with the same person or object appearing in more than a single place as if they were clones. Heaps of fun. 24, have an injured or non-participant record and edit an advocacy video highlighting your P program 
using the app iMovie. Very simple way to engage someone who can't participate to produce a bit of a like explainer of what's happening in your class. Number 25, turn any YouTube clip into an animated GIF by simply placing the word GIF in front of the YouTube URL. So in your browser where it says YouTube dot and it's got the link to the video, put the word GIF in front of the YouTube part, hit enter and you'll get an animated GIF. Number 26, showcase videos to a big screen using a Chromecast or an Apple TV. Number 27, have your class go live on Facebook or Periscope. This is a great way to engage people who maybe can't you know, visit your school or you get parents watching, etc. Number 28, strap a GoPro to a student during gameplay for a first person perspective. Number 29, fly a drone over a game to see an epic top down perspective. Now in this next section, we're going to be looking at assessment and evaluation ideas. And, you know, we could have put an extensive list of them, but I, th I decided to keep them at things I personally have used and completed and done and, and more of the ideas that I see people doing regularly. Now, idea number 30 is to collate a student portfolio with Seesaw. If you have to pick one idea from this hundred and you've not used Seesaw, I think you should use that as your number one idea. It's a game changer. Go and check it out. Easy way to create portfolios that students do the curation for. Idea 31, capture a formative assessment using plickers. These are paper-based cards that students show and the teachers scan with one swoop across the room from their mobile device and you get the replies from everyone. So one device and you can capture a group's replies. 32, use Kahoot to create an engaging quiz. Now that's the thing, they are super engaging, lots of fun. Number 33, Socrative to test pre-content knowledge. 34, Google Forms for simple quizzes. 35, create dynamic documents using Google Forms responses and the Autocrat add-on. So this lets you take the replies from Google Forms and mash those replies into template documents that can become reports. So for example, the fitness test, kids fill out the results, the replies then get jammed into their report, which you can then print out. 36, use the app iDossio to capture assessment data tied to students. 37, use a QR code in a Google form to create a moving and looping image that you can then have students assess. 38, take your students through an engaging presentation with assessment using the app Nearpod. 39, create an electronic bulletin board that can be used for assessment with Padlet. Number 40, teach anything to anyone from anywhere with the Edu Creations app. Now, in the next category, we're going to be looking at Google. And, you know, obviously this is a huge area on its own. We've got webinars and so on at this site that you can participate in. But, you know, if I wanted to pick a collection of things that have transformed my classes on on a platform level, then Google is it. You know, there's so many opportunities and uh, these ideas should shed some, shed some light on those. Idea 41, have students collaborate on a written piece all together in Google Docs. 42, collate and graph an entire class's heart rate response in Google Sheets. This is one of the first things I ever did with Google back in the day, had everyone in the one class putting their data into a shared sheet. And at the front of the class, I had on the screen the, the main sheet and it was graphing everyone's data in real time. 43, have students showcase their knowledge of whatever you're learning with Google Slides. Number 44, create an online classroom environment with Google Classroom. And you know the fact that Google Classroom has been so successful is because of how friction-free it is. I've got teachers who've never, ever used anything like this before, now leveraging Classroom for the first time and, and getting some really good results and helping students learn and get their resources from wherever they are. 45, have students draw anatomical diagrams using Google Drawings. 46, create a school or classroom website with Google Sites. 
47, create a digital portfolio of student achievement using the Google Drive folder structures in the mobile apps. And this is the easiest way to create a digital portfolio. Simply have students take photos and videos and, and publish them to their Google Drive. Obviously, this isn't as polished as Seesaw, which I spoke about earlier, but it is a very simple way to create a simple portfolio. Number 48, generate hundreds of student certificates in seconds using Google Sheets and the Autocrat add-on. So imagine having the first name and last name of your students in a sheet. You run the Autocrat add-on and it takes their name and jams it into a certificate template and you make hundreds of them in seconds. That's what you can do. 49, capture ongoing student observations from a Google form to a Google document. So you could be doing an assessment of student behavior those results that you enter into the form get put into the kid, kid's own form and you append and add to that over time. 50, use the form mule add-on to send mail merge emails. If you've got 100 emails you want to send and they're all individual, use form mule to craft out and dynamically change the content in your template email and then send to everyone. 51, use the self-grading quiz with Fluberoo for Google Forms. This is a way to create a Google Form that self-grades. 52, build a collaborative calendar for you and your students to track key events. You know, you could have a shared calendar, invite everyone and due dates and, and so on that at your school could all be shared via the Google Calendar. Now in this next category, we're looking at active gaming and, and active gaming is something that you know I, I find to be quite fun. It's not necessarily a thing that you're gonna go and roll into your lessons and, and have it meet outcomes but you can engage students you can have them playing these things in their own time um, you know creating some smiles in your classroom and I think that's an important thing so 53 slay the monsters using real world physical activity with dungeon runner if you've never played dungeon runner you sort of have to move in the real world to control the avatar in the game 54 outrun the zombie apocalypse with zombies run now this is insane you put your headphones in and you actually have to run in the real world and outrun the zombies which you hear in your headphones 55 turn your everyday walks into a world saving adventure with the walk uh, this is just encouraging you to actually do more walking exercise and save the planet with superhero workout complete a seven minute workout. Now, if you go and search seven minute workout in your app store, you'll see there are thousands of different opportunities that to do a seven minute workout. Heaps of different, heaps of different variations. 58, play a game of motion tennis using your iPhone as the racket. Now this app lets you use your phone. You swing it like a racket and you play tennis in the actual game. It's insane. 59, explore the real world while exercising on a cardio machine with BitGym. So imagine you're on a boring exercise bike and you put BitGym, the app, in front of you and you can ride through the French Alps, for example. Now, continuing on from that active gaming world, we're moving into something that's you know, only going to become more powerful as the years go on, and that is augmented and virtual reality. So for idea number 60, create an augmented reality treasure hunt with metaverse.io. 61, wear the virtual Lee T and point the app at the t-shirt to see inside the human body. So this is an incredible way to, to, to learn about anatomy by having a real world person wear a shirt that triggers this thing inside the app and um, you just have to go along and see it because it'll blow your mind. 62, place an augmented reality model in the real world with Human Anatomy Atlas. Using this, I actually felt like I had a cadaver lying in front, lying in front of me. It was that good. 63, test your speed and agility with AR Runner. This is a game that you basically have to run between virtual markers in the real world. And it tests your speed to do that. Measure a long jump without a tape measure using measure kit and augmented reality. You heard that right. It is now possible with using just your mobile device to measure a distance using not a tape measure, but just the camera pointing at the two things you want to measure. Number 65, take an immersive tour of the human heart on your kitchen table with Insight Heart. Number 66, build interactive posters and flyers with Orasma. Number 67, create a VR experience with cospaces.io. 
Number 68, play a virtual soccer game with Final Kick VR. And number 69, watch an immersive 360-degree video with a VR headset to experience pretty much what it's like to do that thing. And, you know, if you go to any of the 360-degree video libraries like YouTube, for example, and search, put a VR headset on, you will feel like you're doing that thing. So you could have students pretend they're jumping out of a plane or playing in a, um, a, a tournament or whatever you wanted to do. Number 70, this is all about productivity tools now. So we've moved on from just looking at um, you know tools that you can use for a particular assessment or task. And these are more general. So they're more about you, the teacher, and helping you be more effective. They would be appropriate for not just you, but non-PE teachers. Number 70, save your passwords with LastPass. The number of people that I hear that have terrible password security uh, is insane. If you use LastPass, you'll have the best last um, password security. You'll never need to think about new passwords. It just makes that whole process a dream. Number 71, communicate with your colleagues using Slack. This is an instant messaging tool for teams and a great way to increase the collaboration of your department. Number 72, get focused on one thing using the Momentum-Chrome extension. This is an extension you install every time you open a tab, you get a reminder to be doing that one thing. Number 73, unsubscribe from all of your emails with one click using unroll.me. Now you probably get a lot of junk mail. Don't unsubscribe from our newsletter, but if you've got lots of newsletters, unroll.me will let you unsubscribe from all of them with one go. Number 74, collaborate on projects using Trello. It's like post-it notes but for your computer. Number 75, get more productive using the Brain FM radio station. This uses brainwave frequencies and music to help you be more productive. It's insane. I don't know if it's a placebo, but it definitely works. 76, track the time you spend digitally on your computer using the Rescue Time app. It sits in the background and tracks how much time you spend on websites and social media and, and doing nothing and gives you a breakdown of this time. Automate repetitive tasks with IFTTT or workflows. That's idea number 77. And you can string together a heap of tasks that you commonly do and have these tools do it for you. 78, record a screencast with this free Screencastify Chrome extension. 79, subscribe to websites with Feedly. Now this means that you don't have to go to the website to read about it. The website comes to your Feedly account. Number 80, ensure you get an email reply from a colleague with Boomerang. Now, if someone hasn't replied to you, Boomerang will resend them the email until they reply. Now, the last category I want to share with you are useful tools that uh, you can leverage for whether it's just your everyday classroom and they don't really fit into categories and I lump them into this useful tools box because um, they are things I, I absolutely love and enjoy and I think that you could get some value from them as well. Idea number 81 is to time sprint races with incredible accuracy using Sprint Timer. 82, time your start reaction time using sprint start. You basically put your device in your phone, in your pocket, and do a sprint start as you normally would, and it will tell you your reaction time. Number 83, measure your vertical jump using the What's My Vertical app. 84, create engaging classroom posters with Canva so you can make your classroom look epic. There's no easier tool to use to create cool stuff with graphics than Canva. 85, take 25 photos of your PE class and have Animoto create an epic video montage with music. It's a great way to celebrate what's happening. 86, have your students produce an infographic of their knowledge with PictoChart. 87, create an engaging worksheet using Comic Life. You can have sort of step-by-step -step or instructional elements. Think of a comic book and basically you can use Comic Life to make anything and worksheets come up really cool with Comic Life. 88, use Care Monkey to engage and organize your permission letters and notes home. There is no easier way than using Care Monkey to avoid having to send letters and, and pieces of paper home. Have an injured student complete stats for another student using Swipe Stats app. Number 90, measure your heart rate from your mobile device using cardio. Simply put your hand over the camera lens, 
run the app and it'll tell you your heart rate. 91, get your students calm and focused with smiling mind. 92, showcase the rules of a new game with coach note. You can also do and use coach note to leave relief lessons where teachers can see the games that you wanted to play. 93, easily create brackets by categories and share brackets with people by email and social networks with the bracket app. And by bracket, I mean create a competition that have people playing each other and then have that be shared uh, as this is you know the upcoming competition and, and so everyone's on the same page. 94, test your sprint speed using the fitness meter app. This is an absolute favorite of mine. You can run through two light gate tests in the app and uh, it's almost like going to the university and, and running through actual light gates, but you don't need a, a light gate machine, you just use the app. 95, download YouTube clips for offline play at clipconverter.cc. Now, this is useful if you've got no Wi-Fi and you would like to show a video. Great way to, to make that possible. 96, create a PE newsletter with S'more. Now, S'more is a fantastic website, very easy to build something that people can engage in and you could create a, a what's happening in your PE program. 97, track the time, speed, and much more of your run, walk, ride with RunKeeper. Number 98, create a QR code using qrstuff.com. Number 99, create a QR code treasure hunt using the class tools website. And this is where you would put a QR code in places around your school and people have to scan it, answer the question and move on to the next one. And ID 100, and you know, this is, I think resonates and is the key to all of this. Become a better PE teacher. And one way you can do that is by engaging with people on places like Twitter or Voxer, um, if you know, if you just shared your ideas with other people, you would become a better PE teacher. And uh, I guarantee that the reason this blog exists is because I have shared and happily learnt from other people. So if you want to become a better PE teacher, that's one way you can do it. Now, obviously, there's a hundred ideas there. They're, they're very quick, rapid fire. But the idea is that you can maybe see something and hear something and, and go and explore it with more detail. I'd love to hear about things that you've tried or things that you've done from this list and how they work for you. If you have completed all of them, great. How about you share some of the stuff that you do inside the comments or on social media? I'd love to hear from it. And uh, as always, it's an absolute pleasure to have you listening. I cannot wait to be back for episode 101 coming to you very shortly. Um, but as always, thanks again, and I look forward to speaking soon.